Welcome to Life Church Panania. What a pleasure to be with you. We're bringing God's word and our service of worship to you today. Our theme is going to be overcoming anxiety, and we're going to turn to God's word to find how to do that. We have the privilege of guiding you through our worship today. I'm Ian. And I'm Eleanor. And we're going to begin our time with prayer. Father, we bow in your presence, confident that you love us, you care for us, you want the best for us, you're going to rescue us from anxiety, from ourselves and from this world. And so we commit our time of worship to you in Jesus' name. Amen. We honour Jesus because although he is Lord of eternity, he dwells in humanity and kneels in humility. Let's praise him in song. wonderful God. No wonder we can sing his praises. Our next song follows that same theme. Jesus came down to earth from his throne on high. He humbled himself. He came to live so he could die. And my response is to say, I believe. Make our 
Indeed, Lord, we believe it to be true because it's proved again and again. Uh, what do we need to know about what's coming up? What's the news? And it's this. Today is our Myanmar morning tea and mission prayer. So give yourself a great morning tea as a reminder that God has blessed you so richly and offer a prayer for those who serve uh, across cultures and lands and seas. Our mission giving and we're, we're getting towards the end of the year you can see we started really well COVID and the lockdown has had an impact but we're looking forward to some great strong giving towards the end of the year so we can meet our target give the kids food on the table and clothes on their back and so to that end thank you to those who support the ministry of our church and of our mission with your tithes and your offerings uh, you are indeed a great blessing to us and we want to say thank you for all that you've uh, done and continue to do god bless you for that this wednesday there's a face-to-face -face bible study and everyone is welcome to attend and then next Sunday, come prepared so that even online, you're able to share the Lord's Supper with us. Then after that service next Sunday, we will have our annual general meeting. And the question that we're going to be asked is, we have all this money, thanks to the legacy from the last will and testament of Dorothy. And you notice that the money that's in the loan offset account is the same amount as the amount in the mortgage. So the question is, do we continue to pay $1,000 a month in repayments and keep that money? Or do we pay off the mortgage? We'll have no spare money, but we do benefit by not having to pay out $1,000 a month in repayments. If you're looking online and you have uh, would like to have some input, then please, by all means, email us. And then in the week following that, that's about 10 days away, Bunnings have reached out to us. We didn't have to go knocking on their door. They came knocking on our door, uh, inviting our musicians to be the music and song for a family fun day. And so please come along, support our musicians, but particularly to pray for those who hear the songs and to invite them to come along to our Christmas Day service. Looking further afield, uh, part of the ministry that the church has is in social justice. Thus says the Lord, do justice and righteousness and deliver from the hand of the oppressor. Well, our prime minister said, I think it was only just, just this last couple of days. The Commonwealth has a Sex Discrimination Act, a Racial Discrimination Act, a Disability Discrimination Act, and an Age Discrimination Act. However, there is no standalone legislation to protect people of religion against discrimination. And so the Religious Discrimination Bill will, will fix this. Now, it was introduced into Parliament this week. And it's going to protect people of all faiths, not just ours, but every pe everybody of every faith. 
However, it's, the bill is facing some pushback from those who oppose faith. So what we can do is we can pray for our politicians as they make good laws. And we can pray for our own local MP. Now, in the Panania area, that's David Coleman. And wherever you're watching around Australia, because this is Commonwealth legislation, feel free, contact your own MP or a senator to ensure that this uh, discrimination bill is able to go through. Or well, it's really an anti-discrimination bill, isn't it? So let's pray. We need to pray constantly. We need to keep coming back to God so that we draw on his strength. Heavenly Father, we bow in your name. Thank you for your greatness, your glory, your majesty, your wonder. You are to be honoured for you are the creator, the saviour and the sustainer. We do praise you for all that you are, even beyond our wildest imagination, and ask that your will will be done and your kingdom come here on earth in a, a world that is crazy with sin and disease and with strife. We need your wisdom to flow through your people. Bring it about, we pray, as you elevate your own people and pass laws that are good for our country. Provide us with what we do need in wise legislation, in godly uh, politicians and leaders, as well as the things that we need. We pray for our orphans that our giving will match what they need to put food on their table and clothes on their back. We pray for those who are part of our church and wider family who struggle with pain and with uh, aches that are of the soul that we can't even see. Lord, meet their every need in ways that we could not possibly do ourselves. But we also know that we are unworthy and undeserving of anything you give us, but you promised to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us and restore us in a relationship with you. Lord, hear our cry and bring us back to yourself, we pray. And may all things bring power and honour and glory to you through Jesus our Lord, in whom we pray. Amen. Our scripture reading includes these words. All of you, strap on humility toward one another because God opposes the proud but gives grace to the humble. So we've got a couple of songs that we're going to sing that continue to build on this theme of humility. The first of them is this. God's word says, humble yourself.
We want to live out scripture in song and in word. Our next song is, is my favourite of this week. It really is a gentle prayer. Lord, show me what it means to have a humble heart. Make it your prayer too, a humble heart. Lord, show me what it Thank you, Lord, for the heart that you place within us. And now we come to open up God's word. It's found in 1 Peter chapter 5 and verses 5 through 7. Hear the word of the Lord. There is no change for younger ones. Submit to those who are mature. All of you strap on humility toward one another because God opposes the proud but gives grace to the humble. Therefore, be humble under the mighty hand of God, so that he may exalt you in the right season, having cast all that you worry about upon him, because with him you are surrounded with care. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Do you sometimes feel like this? Well, even if you don't feel like this, the Lord is going to bring across your path someone who does feel like this, wading through life, struggling to make progress. If you know how to help yourself, you will know how to help the person that God brings to you who's feeling like this. Now, we're not going to deal with both ends of the spectrum. We want to deal with what's here in the middle. And uh, if you are down at that right hand end, right down the bottom, and you, if you are clinically depressed or know someone who is, treat it like any other clinical problem. Let me give you an example. Some months back, I had a tooth that, for no apparent reason, shattered all the way from the crown right down to the tip of the root. God chose not to miraculously heal it, so I had to go to the dentist, my least favorite activity. If I didn't get clinical help, Infection would have set in and a slew of other problems would have ensued. In the same way, if you are clinically depressed or clinically with any other problem, you need to get clinical help. Get yourself to a godly doctor. But what we are going to address today is the in-between bits. We're going to address the downward slide and the upward climb. Now, I know it's more complicated than this, but let's 
cut to the chase and make it simple. Anxiety will drag you down, but humility will help you climb up. Did you know about one in 10 Australians are going to suffer at least one bout of anxiety in the coming year, which is a total of about 2 million people. So you're going to bump into someone who needs your help. Most common cause is financial worries, job security, relationships, uh, health worries, uh, worrying about what other people think about me, worrying about what happened in the past. Anxiety is feeling forced into a lowly position, being squashed down and feeling stressed by lack of control. Whereas humility, on the other hand, is gladly accepting a lowly position and feeling relieved that God is in control. So humility is the willingness to take a little step, even if it's a step down, in order to bring about a small change. And the accumulation of those small, humble changes will make a big difference. Now, if you're taking notes, here's where you can start, because I want to be practical about this. We overcome anxiety, first of all, by setting priorities. And this scripture that we're looking at gives us four simple ways to overcome our anxiety. And our first task is to set priorities. Now, what are those priorities? The scripture says... There's no change. It's still the same rules, whether you're younger or older. Submit to those who are mature. So our priority is self-sacrifice in our submission. It's not about me. There are people who can help me. I've got to be sacrificial of myself. Humility is the very opposite of grabbing yourself by the bootlaces and pulling yourself up. It doesn't work. Self-centeredness is things like rehearsing your problems, reminding yourself of your struggles, recounting the issues that you're facing, whereas self-sacrifice is rehearsing what God the Father has already done for you, reminding yourself of the abundant life that has already been given to you by Jesus and recounting the fruit being produced in you by the indwelling Holy Spirit. So God's word, God's spirit, God's people are God's gifts to guide you. So what do you do? Don't just talk about what's a problem for you. Submit to God's process and the people that he's given you to help you get through this. Talking is like a soldier marking time. It gives you something to do, but it doesn't take you anywhere. At some point, you have to stop talking and start submitting. Do something helpful. Your first priority is self-sacrifice. Stop making your life all about you. It isn't. Your life is all about God in you. And submit to those who are mature. So your priority is is onto selective submission. There is no shortage of people who are willing to tell you what you should do, but not all advice is good advice. Whose advice are you going to follow? Submit to those who are mature, to those who are further down the pathway than you. You have to say yes to some people, and that means you have to say no to others. Toughen up. You've got to say no to some of the things that you hear some of the the self-talk. You have to say no to that as well. If you're going to move up that slope to a happier place, let your yes be yes, your no be no. Say it out loud and act on it. You have to make it your priority to move up the slippery slope uh, with others who are also moving in that upward direction. Join the happy crowd. And your priority is not just about you, it's supportive submission. While you're submitting to those who are mature, you are strapping on uh, the humility that you need to give to others or others need to give to you. This is a mutuality toward one another. And these principles don't just apply to those who are sliding down into anxiety. These principles are for every one of us. And our priority is to be humble enough to lift 
other people up. We're to strap on humility. Now, strap on means gird up your loins, roll up your sleeves and move forward. Take the steps that are going to take you out of anxiety that will stop you sliding down and help you slide up. Now, it's all very well and good to say that they're the priorities, but how do you do that? It happens when you're in together. It happens as a church family. It happens when we're supporting one another. All of you, every one of us is in on this. We, you are not alone. And no one gets put down in this. We're all singing from the same hymn sheet. Humility means life is not all about you. It's about God in you. And we are together singing that celebration. Sing that celebration out loud. It will put the brakes on sliding down. So how are we going to do that? We overcome anxiety with a key principle. And, and it's this. Anxiety drags you down and humility takes you up. The key principle is that humility is going to help you climb up out of this place of being worried and anxious and afraid and sliding down even further. So how do I do that? I choose my attitude that I have to others. Strap on humility to one another. If you are Mr. Grumble Trousers and you've got nothing but complaints about other people, it will be oil under your feet. You will slide down. It'll take you out of a happy place. Strap on humility to one another. So I need to learn from and I need to give to other people. I need to engage with others. Running away and hiding is not going to help. If you can remember all the way back to verse 2, we need to be shepherds of the flock of God that is among you. We're, we're helping others. Helping others is a great way to help yourself. Keeping diligent oversight of them. Don't make it about you. Help someone else. I choose my attitude to others, but I also need to choose my attitude to God because God opposes the proud but gives grace to the humble. It's a quote from the book of Proverbs. Now, it looks like God opposes the proud and gives grace to the humble. He does. God is set in that. God has set. He's also set his attitude towards me and his attitude is love as well as fixing his attitude towards sin and virtues. Now, it might look like God keeps changing his mind about us, but it isn't God who's changing. Who is it? It's us, and we need to keep on pulling ourselves to the place of humility. And that way, God is able to give us grace to be able to move up the slope. And I choose my attitude not only to others not only to God but also my attitude to myself and it should come as no surprise that we are told to be humble as we saw last week for the Christian humility is absolutely indispensable without humility there can be no self-knowledge Without humility, there can be no repentance. Without humility, there can be no faith. Without humility, there can be no salvation. You see how those roll on naturally where that's a sensible order to have. So how are we going to put this into practice? We overcome anxiety for a helpful purpose. It's not about me. It's for a helpful purpose. And what is that purpose? First of all, I have a priority, which is submit in self-sacrifice. I have a principle, which is to be humble. And now this helpful purpose. And what is the purpose? Well, it's also threefold here in this verse. God is the right strength that I need. I'm to be humble, but I'm to be humble under the mighty hand of God. God is my first priority to choose to submit myself to him. 
a lovely verse. You might have even memorized this one. Jesus said, I am the vine, you are the branches. If you abide in me, and then I can abide in you, you will bear much fruit. For, because, apart from me, you can do nothing. If we are going to move up the slope, if we are going to enjoy the life that God has got for us, if we are going to escape from the terrible things that are emotional and physical turmoil, then we need to abide in Christ, humble ourselves into him, and we will find that we become fruitful. For this strength is found in humility. And when we are humble, God adds his strength to lift us up beyond anxieties and worries and apprehension, up into a better place. When you choose humility, you allow God to add his strength to your efforts. Now, we're going to do something about that. God is also my right direction. He is taking me somewhere. He wants to take me up the slope. And it says, therefore, be humble under the mighty hand of God so that he may exalt you, so that he can take you in the better direction, so he can take you in the upward direction. Now, upward direction is not entirely towards necessarily a perfect place. Uh, uh, that'll be heaven eventually. Anxiety will drag you down out of your green zone, your good zone. Humility will help you climb back up into your green zone. N notice here that the green zone is not always just happy. Your green zone is a good zone, even though it extends downward to include some stress. Because stress, some stress, can be good for you. Stress reminds me that I need to pray. Stress reminds me that without Jesus, I can do nothing fruitful. So don't expect perfection in an imperfect world, but be humble enough to climb back up into a better place. In a broken world, you have to expect things that go things to go wrong. Marriages break apart, finances collapse, well-laid plans go up in smoke. So it's no wonder that Jesus said, "In this world, you will have tribulation." And a bit of trouble is not always a bad thing. You know, it generates prayer and uh, plans. But it gets worse. God himself says, I form the light and I create darkness. I bring prosperity and I create disaster. I, the Lord, do all these things. Notice this. God puts up his hand not only to do the good things, but to do the things that add stress to our lives. But before you spin out, this does not say, does not say everything bad comes from God. Clearly, I am my own worst enemy. And then I've also got the world, the flesh and the devil against me. But sometimes God is the one who shakes my perch and makes me realize that without him, I can do nothing. So anxiety makes me look outward, look at, look at the problems of the world, look at the things that are bearing in on me, look at my circumstances, whereas humility helps me to look upward. Now, there's a classic example of this, and it's Mary and Martha. Martha was distracted, you know, looking at the outward, by all the preparations to be made. She came to Jesus and said, Lord, don't you care that my sister has left me to serve alone? Tell her to help me. Martha, Martha, the Lord replied, you are anxious and upset by many things. You've slid down and it's no longer about God. It's uh, in you. Now it's about you in your circumstances. This, this word anxiety that Jesus said, uh, Martha, you're anxious. The word anxiety 
comes up quite a number of times in Scripture. Most of the time, two-thirds of the time, Jesus is the one who talks about anxiety or worry. So it's only natural we go back to him and find in him the peace that we need. Now, this word anxiety means to be drawn in opposite directions, to be divided into parts, to be pulled to pieces, pulled apart, divided, distracted. You know what that's like. That's not what God's got for you. That's not what Jesus does. He pulls things together. And so we have God is my right strength. God is my right direction. And now God is my right time. Be humble so that he can exalt you in the right season. The New Testament's got two words that it uses for time. Uh, one of them is the sort of time you use in a stopwatch, uh, and, and that's the word chronos. It gives us chronology and a chronometer, which is a fancy name for a watch, um, minutes and seconds tick away. But that's not the word that's used here. The other word that the New Testament uses for time is kairos, and it means a season or a period or a stage. And so God is going to lift us up but it will be in the right season, the right period. He will do the thing that we need him to do, or we think we need him to do. So God will exalt you, but it has to be at the right time. And the right time comes when we humble ourselves. So when we humble ourselves, the right season begins. And as we spend time in humility, then he is able to lift us up. We take a low position. He lifts us to a high one. God's not a magician performing magic tricks for our amusement. Even though we often treat him like that, we want the instant results. But the journey up the slope takes time. And at the right time, then you'll find that your humility will result in God lifting you up. So there's one more thing that we need to look at. We overcome anxiety by facing up to the problems that are around us. It's not just about, oh, I'll pray and I'll, I'll submit to God and they'll all just evaporate. We also need to address the problems that we are facing. The Bible is always practical in this way. And so the first thing we need to do is address all your anxiety. Now, it's having cast all that you worry about upon him. And you're facing a mountain, a mountain of worries. You will find that the mountain is made up of lots of pebbles. Name each pebble. Deal with each pebble. Don't deal with the mountain. Deal with the pebbles and address them one at a time and address all of them. Yes, it will take time. That's why it's a season and not an instant. Address your anxieties and address all that you worry about. When you identify and specify the various parts of the problems that you're facing, you engage in divide and conquer. Your, your worries start to fall apart. Instead of you falling apart, pull your worries apart. You'll find it makes all the difference. And then account for all that you achieve. You're making progress already. Recognize the good that you've already achieved. This says, having cast all that you worry about upon him, having cast all your anxieties upon him, you've already done part of the work. Continue on. Don't slow down. Keep going. And what you can do then is to celebrate and give thanks for each pebble that you deal with. It's been picked up out of your mountain of worry and you've thrown it to Jesus. He has caught it 
and he's dealing with it. He's already dealt with your sin. He's already dealt with your eternity. He can deal with the other little things that you throw to him. Every step is a success, so celebrate it. Every day is a gift. Thank God for it. How? When a worry returns to your mind, thank God that you have cast that worry upon him. And as you thank him, say, it's your problem, not mine. And then with that, we need to accept all God's answers. His answers may not be the one that you told him to deliver. But he will answer you. He will always answer you. And sometimes he says, no, not that answer, but a different one. But here is the promise. With him, you are surrounded by care. Accept all the answers that God gives you. And the care that embraces you is his care, his particular, specific, divine care. But you are surrounded by by other care. There are people who care about you and you are to be the one who cares about others as well. Here is a a logical rather than a linguistic inversion parallelism. On the outside is what you are worried about, but at the bottom you are cared about. And the centerpiece for this is what you cast upon him because you are with him. It's not about you. Your problems are not about you. The centerpiece is the fact that you are cared for. It's not about your circumstances. So where is your centerpiece? If you make it you, you will have worries. If you make it your circumstance, you will have worries. But when you are centered upon Jesus, you will find that he is the one who is able to carry you through and lift you up and help you to climb the slope to a much better place. So keep on casting every pebble, every huge rock that you come across that is your mountain. Keep casting it to Jesus. He will catch it and he will build something useful with it. As long as you keep Christ the center and you find that he, in turn, will keep on caring for you. Yes, you can do something, something constructive about your anxiety. And our song of response then is we can cast all our care upon him and we can trust him because he cares for us. You can trust him.
you, Lord, for being trustworthy. And now we close with a wonderful benediction. Be anxious for nothing, but in everything, by prayer and petition, with thanksgiving, present your request to God, and the peace of God which surpasses all understanding will guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. Lord, we make this our prayer today. We want to come to you with our prayers and our thanks for what you've done, for what you are doing and for what you will do in accordance with your promise in your word. And we would claim and make your peace our peace in our hearts and our minds through Jesus' name. Amen. If you've benefited out of this or you know someone who will benefit, someone who struggles with anxiety, you might like to share this with them. And until we can meet again, either through the internet or face to face, the Lord bless you, keep you and make you a follower of Jesus as you seek to know him through and through. God bless. Goodbye for now.